Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this little 4th of July card. We'll be merging three photos, doing an architecture blue line art effect back in here, and some fancy type work as well. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, share the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training, and you'll find a link for that up there in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, let's get to it. We'll be using these two photographs, this one of the Capitol building right here, and also this picture of all these flags as our main photos, and they're doing a lot of work on these, of course. So I'll be coming back to the flag as a final step. So let's just minimize that, get that out of the way. So here's the basic Capitol building. There's a few problems you can see already in here. The perspective is way off on this. It's really angling in here, kind of a weird angle. I want to fix our perspective first and then work from there and then begin doing the blue line. So I'm just going to pull my window out like this. Now if you don't have floating windows working on your computer, go up here to Edit, come down to Preferences and General, and make sure these two checkboxes are checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode and also enable floating document window docking. With those two checked like that, you can then have your picture docked like this or pull it out and float the window just like that. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to come in here and fix the perspective on this. Using the transform tool, go up here to image, come down to transform, and we'll start off with perspective. Now, on this one, if you grab one of the corners, you can pull it out and actually stretch the picture out just like this. It just kind of stretches out. What I want to do is get the lines basically straight. They're not perfect yet, but they're they're better. I think kind of like that. I'm looking at this angle over here and the one over here on the far right hand side. I, I don't want to go too far on that one either. So I'm taking it out just a bit. It's not quite perfect. You can also pull these up as you can see here into this perspective this way as well. So two ways of doing a perspective, either pull it out or pull it up and down. We'll just be pulling it out just a bit. I don't, again, don't want to go out too far. About like that. So it's almost correct over here. It's pretty good over there. And then choose the green check mark. Now let's do a bit more on this I'm using the skew this time, image, transform, and skew. And with this one, grab the top control handle right there and just push it to the left and actually tilt the whole picture over to the left hand side a little bit. And I'm looking to get this basically straight. You can double check that by grabbing the ruler left hand side and pull in a guideline. And just put that guideline on the corner of, of that building. And that was pretty close. Just a little bit more, but I think right about there. So we're real close over here now. And the main one that I care about is this angle here because we'll have the flagpole in there, it'll be easy to compare. And the capital of the capital building, everything else looks pretty good. And then choose OK, a little green check mark. So there we go, that's straightened our building out a bit. We now want to get rid of this sky in behind and leave just the foreground. So we'll be separating up the background from the foreground. So I'm going to dock this again and zoom and set that at fit screen and then we'll go over here to the magic wand tool I have my tolerance set at 30 which is the default setting and then click over here on a new selection and then come in and click into the sky someplace now once you make your first selection come down here where it says new and change that to the second one so it now should say add we can now add additional spots into the selection. So we'll get this little bit in here, adds that in. Let's get that cloud right there. And I'll get some sky over here and that cloud. Now it may take a few clicks to get everything in here. And just take your time and work through. And where you see those little circles, just kind of click into those areas and it should grab those pretty quickly. Notice also down here I have it set at contiguous. That means that everything has to be touching, and that's actually important. You want everything to be touching when you're making your selections. Otherwise, you may get too much selected in areas you don't want, like down in here or something. So make sure that contiguous is selected. Looks pretty good. There's a little bit right here. That's not fixed. A little bit right there. That's not fixed. We'll get those 
easily here just by changing our tool. I'll just grab the standard lasso tool right down there and set that, make sure it still says add. And just do a lasso around those couple of spots and that grabs those as well. Okay, now we don't need to have the flag, but we'll take that out in just a second. We'll take out as a second step. So there's our basic selection. But this is selecting the sky. What I want is to have the foreground selected. I did the sky because it's just easier on this. So let's go up here to select and then inverse. And there's the foreground. Once your foreground is selected, go up here and let's make a copy of our background layer. There we go. And hide the original. That's just a safety, just in case. And then on this layer, click on the layer mask button. It makes a layer mask in here, giving us that nice clean selection. Now I want to get rid of that flag. We can do that on the layer mask. Notice how white is showing our picture and black is hiding our picture. We can use that trick. Let's just zoom in a bit here to see that flag. There we go, that looks fine. And then I'm just going to grab the paintbrush and let's see, that's pretty big. I'll bring it down a little bit. Maybe about 14 looks pretty good. It's on a hard edge brush. This is do 13, hard edge. And then make sure you're on the layer mask over here. Look for that light blue outline. And then just paint on that layer mask with black paint. And that hides the flag. I'm not erasing the flag. I'm just hiding the flag with that layer mask. I'm actually not touching the picture. I went a little bit too far down there. So let's just undo a step, a couple steps here. Okay, I want a nice straight line down there. So to do that, easy to do. Let's go back over here to our selection tools, grab the lasso, and then come down here to the polygonal lasso. I'll put a click over here someplace, come straight across, or this part of the roof over here, and then up and around back to my beginning spot, which is right there. Now this area is selected, nice straight line. So I can go back to my brush tool and then clean that out and it leaves me with a straight line. Okay, deselect. That takes care of that. Let's go ahead and put this back onto fit screen. So there we go. There is the Capitol building with a nice clean background. We now can work on the blue line effect for the Capitol building. The first thing we need to do is to make this into a black and white. So let's go up to, let's just go to enhance and then make sure I'm on the right layer. So you see the light blue line over here on the layer mask. Double click on the image side of that layer and then back to enhance. We can now do that. Come down to convert to black and white. And the one that I used in here was the newspaper settings, which is real high contrast. And then I brought these slider controls up about two thirds of the way up. It doesn't need to be perfect just you know, kind of approximately two thirds of the way up. Now if you just kind of hold over that for a second, you'll see the number there's plus 83. Now I'm not pushing down on the mouse button. I'm just kind of hovering over it. So they're all at plus 83, but about there, you know, 80 to 85, anywhere in there would be just fine for this. Just a real nice contrasty look. Leave the contrast down here as it is, leave that at the defaults. Then choose okay. So there's that heightened kind of contrasty black and white. Now let's make a copy of this layer, duplicate this layer just like that, make a duplicate of it. On the top one up here we're going to be making a negative out of this. So come up to filter, come down to adjustments and invert. So that's now a negative and that's a positive. We're now going to blend these two layers together with our blend modes right there and come down to color dodge. There it is. And what it does is the black and white negative hides the black and white positive and you get this kind of a just a solid white thing. And that's perfectly correct. We're now going to move the black one just a little bit. Adjust the size just a little bit. And that's going to give us our lines in here. We do that with a filter. Come up here to filter. Come down to other right there. And the one that you want is the minimum and setting at five pixels and choose OK. And it gives that real nice kind of pencil drawn effect in there. Now I want to have this whole thing on one layer. So I have two layers here. I want to have it combined on one layer. 
We'll use a special keyboard shortcut for that. It's the Control, Shift, Alt, and E key. And that merges all of that stuff together onto one layer up here. You can now hide those two layers. We're done with those. Okay, we're onto this layer. We now want to play with our contrast just a little bit on this one, adjust our contrast again. We'll do that with the layer. Here to layer, come down to adjustment layer, and we'll be using levels. Where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that that's selected. That just limits this adjustment to that one layer. Choose OK. And in here, we can adjust the midpoint, our gray values, our black, and our white values. So we'll pull the black up quite a way. See, it kind of darkens the blacks in there. I'm going to bring this up. I have my set at 51, so I used my sample. 51. The gray tones, we can make them lighter or darker in here. And the number that I used on this is 0.89. Let me just type that in. 0.89. Again, we're going for a real contrasty look on those lines. And the white, I left that alone. So again, levels control, 51 on your black, 0.89 on your mid-tone values, then close that down. There's a nice, clean, hand-drawn effect, a bit on the contrasty side, which helps with the blue line effect. Now we need to add blue onto this, and we'll do that with a layer above all of this stuff. So let's go up to Layer, come down to New Fill Layer and Solid Color. This time where it says Use Previous Layer, let's Leave that unchecked this time, and choose OK. And that gives us a solid color layer up there. We want a nice blue over in here someplace. Now the actual blue that I use, we can type it in right down here. This is the hexadecimal number section. Easy to use it this way. Just type in a number down here. And the number that I used was 0134B8. And there it is. It's kind of a nice standard blue, choose OK. Now to get this to come into our black and white image, we need to blend this layer into that black and white layer. And again, that's a blending mode trick right here. And the one you want is screen right there. And there it is, that gives us that nice blue coloration in here. It's time now for our blue sky. Go up here to File, and I have that right here. Now all of these pictures, of course, you can download these and there's a link for that on the materials page for this video. So you can go ahead and download these images. Also open up this sky image. There we go. And I'm just going to drag this one in just like that. And close that down. So here it is. Now it's a little bit too small, as you can see there. Not quite the right size. So I'm going to put it up here to the top. And then grab the bottom right-hand corner. Just pull it down so it's big enough to fit. There we go. And now let's put it in behind. I'll grab this and just drag it down in behind the building layer here. It says layer one. Just drag it down like that. And there we go. There's our new sky in the background. Now I want to make the outline a lot harder here on the building to help it separate out from the sky. So we'll do that. That again is right here on the drawing layer. And we'll do a layer style this time. Go up to layer, come down to layer style and style settings. And we'll do a stroke on this one. Now I found that even though it says outside, some of this actually is inside. So I'm going to change this to inside and then back to outside again. Leave your color up black and then set the size to 6. Now it gives us some weird stuff out here. These are little spots that didn't get cleaned out when we did the magic wand on the sky. So we can fix those pretty easily. Just choose OK. That takes care of the outline. And that's going to be on this layer. All we need to do is to erase that stuff to clean those out. So I'm just going to zoom in here and do a little cleanup. There we go. Make sure you're on the drawing layer. And then grab the eraser tool. And that's too big. Let me bring that down. 23 is OK. So we're in there. And just erase over those. And let's just go through and clean up the sky. Maybe a little bit right in there. There we go. Let's get those little spots out of there. I think we're okay. No, nope, not quite. A little bit showing down here. Get this stuff cleaned out. You get these things sometimes with the magic wand. It doesn't catch everything. It will sometimes require some cleanup. But as you can see, it's pretty easy. I'm just erasing those spots off of the page. 
and that cleans that stuff out. That should do it. And back to fit screen. There we go. Nice and clean. And we've now added in a nice little dark outline just to help separate out that image from the sky. Okay, that takes care of that part. We now can put our flag in here, front left hand corner. We'll go back up and open up that file. That's a flag image right there. Just choose open. There's the flag. I'm just going to drag this in. There we go. It's dragging onto the page like that. Now it came in clipped up here. That's just the position. I'm just going to move that up to the top of the stack. There we go. So that's fine. As you can see here, it's kind of off to the left hand side. Let's see if we can straighten that up. Just come outside the corner here, just, just outside, get the kind of a bent arrow. Grab that and then pull that around until the flag lines up nice with that edge. I'll just push it against the edge. I can really see that. And just a touch other direction. That looks pretty good. Okay, that gets the flag nicely lined up. There's a little bit of a weird thing up here, which we can clean up at this point. This little top bit's kind of pulled off to the side. We can go ahead and fix that as well. I'll just grab the plug on a lasso tool. Let's do a quick lasso right across the edge there and then up around like that. And then using the Control T keyboard shortcut, bring up our control handles, come just outside and grab that corner. You can pull it around till it's straight and then pull it over just a little bit. And that's pretty good. And green check mark. There we go, that's cleaned up. Let's go ahead now and deselect that. Go back to the magic wand and we'll do a couple of things. Actually, before I even do the magic wand, let's just get rid of the stuff over here on the right hand side. We don't need all those other flags. So let's zoom back to fit screen on this and then grabbing the polygonal lasso tool. I'll start up here and let's just do a, just a, an easy lasso right around this flag. Come right little point right there. It's kind of a basic lasso back to the beginning point. And then use that to make a new layer mask, layer mask button. And that hides everything else. Okay, now we can come in and clean up the rest of this. Pretty easy this time. Just zooming in a little bit and use the magic wand. Now I'm on the layer mask, so let's go over here to the image side and then click on that bit here. That gets all of that and this stuff, I'll scroll down using the wheel on the, on the mouse and just scroll down. I'm using the add, as you can see down there, the add selection. And I'm just gonna add in all of the sky that's around the flag. Make sure I catch all those pieces. A little bit right in here, I don't want, but we'll fix that, that's okay. Get the in-between section here and down in there. Okay, oh, because that's all been selected. We can now go back to the layer mask side. Grab our paintbrush, make sure it's still on black. Go a little bit larger, I think, this time on my brush. That's a pretty good size. And then I'm just painting on the layer mask, black on the layer mask, and adding in that little bit of the layer mask to hide that part of the image that we don't want. And I'll scroll down and just get more of that. The reason it's clean, of course, here is because we have that selection, which is handling that for us. So we're only able to do the black paint into the part that we just selected, which is the sky part that we don't want, making for a nice clean selection. Okay, just come around the bottom down here. There we go. Now on the, the side here, just go along the edge of the flag, and, and as long as you don't go into the flag, that takes care of that one little bit in there where the selection went in too far. You just don't paint in that far, just paint along the edge. Okay, there's the flag. We can now deselect that, and let's do our whole image back to fit screen. Now grab the Move tool and bring our flag over here, left-hand side. And I think I'll stretch it up just a little bit See how the top is really close to the top of this line here? I don't want it that close. So I'll grab the upper right hand corner, pull it up a little bit so that this top line isn't that close to that edge. It's kind of the same angle. And there we go. That's all we need to do on the flag. Flag is taken care of. Unless we want to brighten the flag up a little bit, which we can do by putting an adjustment layer on our flag layer. 
let's go ahead and take care of that. So layer, new adjustment layer, levels. Make sure this time you check that checkbox that this adjustment only applies to just the flag layer. And then let's come in and adjust our settings. Again, the black soil will darken down your dark, so leave that one alone. The mid value here, you can lighten things up. That's the main one I care about. And I think, oh, pretty bright, maybe about 170 or so, 1.7. Brightens it up nicely. And maybe bring the, the white up a little bit. Looks like maybe about, oh, about there looks pretty good. So 228. It's a little bit on the bright side, but we're doing a card. So you can go a bit more garish on these things because it is a card, it is a graphic. So that looks good. Okay. Now it's still not really separating that well back along here and on this side. So we'll do a little drop shadow on that to take care of that separation. Come back down to our flag layer. This is layer right here. If you want to name that, go ahead. Just double click on the name there. And I'll type in flag. That's our flag layer. Do a layer style. So layer, layer style, style settings. And we'll be doing a drop shadow. Now in this one, I'm going to move the angle of the drop shadow around over here. What I tend to like using a lot is 135. It's kind of upper left-hand corner. That's pretty good. Our distance at 7 is fine. Let's set the opacity to 50%. Just type that in. There we go, 50. And we'll bring our distance out a bit. It's at 3 right now, so I'll bring it out. It says I move the distance. There's that drop shadow right there. Not too far, maybe about 10. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit of a hint of a drop shadow in there. Now up here you can preview this. If I click on and off on the preview, you see how that just a little bit of a drop shadow really helps to separate that flag out from that background. It's not much, just a little subtle bit. Okay, and that takes care of the flag. So all the graphics are now done, and it's ready to add the type into our poster. So I'll go over here to the top layer, and we'll do a new layer above this top layer using the type tool. Now I have mine set for black, that's fine. We'll be changing our color using a different technique here. I'm using Cooper Standard Black Italic, and I have mine set at right align. Now this is just kind of a cartoony face here, just a little bit of a cartoony face and just a little bit of a slant to it. Now any type face you want is fine. Just for this one, use something that has a lot of color in it. You know, a very thick font because we're going to be adding in a gradient and you want some room in the letters to see the gradient. That's all that really matters is that it's thick enough to see your gradient. So it's Cooper Standard Black Italic. It's a real standard typeface. And Black Italic right there. Size at 48 point. You can ignore the letting. It's set at auto. That's fine. Color is black and the texture is right align. Then just click any place up in here and let's type in our text. Make sure I type correctly. There we go. And a space. Happy 4th of July. There it is. Now I had right align so that this side lines up in the green check mark. And let's put this just over here someplace. Now I want to put in a gradient into the type. I also want to have a nice outline on this and a drop shadow outside of the outline. So we'll do that in separate steps. The first thing we'll do is we'll just put our outside outline on this one. So we'll go up to layer and come down to layer style, style settings. And we're doing a stroke right down there. Now on the stroke, when I change your color here, click on the little, little color box, just push it to the upper left hand corner, that's white, choose OK. And again, let's go to inside and then outside again, make sure it's on outside. And then bring the size up, you see there's the size of that stroke right there. And the size I want to have is, and I'll type it in right down here, just so set this at 20 pixels, there we go. Now it's enough so it's a good thick outline, but it's not so much that these begin to bump into each other. You want to keep, leave some space in there. That's the whole reason for the 20. Let me just show you that real fast. If I go too large, they begin to bump like that, and it's kind of weird. If it's too small, it's too small. But on this particular one, anything around the low 20s, 
like from about here, just 24 down to about 20 is pretty good. Anything in that range is fine. And the one I used is 20. That's the design idea behind choosing that particular width on that. Okay, so there is the outline for this. We now can come in and make a custom gradient to use inside of our text. And we'll do that with another layer. Layer, come down to Fill Layer and Gradient, where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Make sure that's checked this time. This will apply the gradient only inside of the letters. And choose OK. Right now it's set at the foreground of transparent. If I just grab anything in here, let's say this rainbow, you see how it applies the rainbow colors into the gradient. Now it actually does rainbow colors on the whole page. So we're only seeing just a little bit of that inside here. Now what we need is a custom gradient. Let me just cancel that again. So I'll choose the gradient. I'll just use the black to white and choose OK. So there's our standard black to white gradient. Now on this, set the style at linear. And then let's set our degrees down here at 39. This will give it a slant. It's kind of a, a slant happening in there now. It's kind of that direction. So a little slant on our gradient. We now can set the colors in here. Click on the gradient itself. That brings up your gradients. And then we have these color stops at the bottom down here. On the left one, click that left color stop. Click where it says color. And then click inside and drag to the upper right hand corner. That's pure red. There's our pure red stop. On the right side over here, click on this one. And then little color box, click on that. We want kind of a blue in here. Now the blue I want to have is the same blue we use for the outline of the Capitol building. So let's just go ahead and type in that blue we used back before. Let me just find my notes on that. Okay. It is 0134B8. There it is. That's the same blue that we used for the outline. Choose OK. Now notice when we do this we get red going into purples and into blues. And I don't want to have any purple stuff happening there. I want to have it red, white, and blue. So we need to have another color stop in here someplace. Notice as I move my arrow here up to the line I get a hand just like that and it says click to add color stop. Click right there. Gives you a new color stop. Click on that color stop and then click on the color over here and pull this to the upper left hand corner and that gives us a white. We now have red to white to blue so the white cleans up the red and the blue so you don't get any of that purple stuff in between. But it's in the wrong place and the white is too large. You can see that up here just kind of messy. We want to have a real small white. Now I have specific positions for this to use on these color stops and also on those center bits. So make sure you're still on the white and then change the location here to 60. Just kind of moves it in. Now notice that I have a little diamond shape right here and a little diamond shape right here. Those are the midpoints. That's where the color gradient change is halfway between this color which is white and this color which is red. So grab that. Now it's kind of hard to grab it. This is I move in here, I get the little hand, and then if I get further, I get that arrow. Make sure you see that arrow and you see where it says color midpoint. Grab it at that point and pull that all the way over here to the right. It should say 95%. Okay, click your color, stop again. Do the same thing over here on this one between the white and the blue. Make sure you see that arrow and you see it says color midpoint. Grab it and pull it to the left, and that should stop at 5. That's as small as you can make that. So there we go. So the white point is at 60, and this color midpoint is at 95, and, and this color midpoint is at 5. Choose OK, and there we go. Now if the text is aligned properly, the streak should be going right through the of in there. Now you can move that around. Here's just say OK on that one. I can take the text and move the text around a little bit as well. Now sometimes if you try moving things like that and kind of changes the layers on, you see how that's happening? I'm clicking on my text layer and I try to move it and it jumps to this layer. You can stop that happening by locking this layer. So it's just got our gradient layer and just lock the gradient layer. There we go. Can now come down to the text. If I move the text, you can see how the gradient actually is staying put, but the text is moving around. 
So you can use that just to kind of fine tune your position. And I like a little bit of red showing there on the bottom of that F. And that's pretty good, but it, it's up to you. Whatever looks good to you is fine. So there we go. The reason I'm putting on, on the of is that that's the least important word here. Happy 4th and July are the important words. Everybody knows that it's going to say of in there, so you can be a little messier on that one. But the white streak gives us a nice clean red and clean blue on that. Okay, so there is the happy 4th of July. Now, I want to put a drop shadow on this, but I can't just add a drop shadow onto this layer here, this style layer, because the drop shadow will be applied to the lettering and not to the outline. So you get kind of a really weird drop shadow. Let me just show you that so you can see the problem here. Then I'll show you how to fix that. So let's go up to Layer, come down to Layer Style, Style Settings, do a drop shadow right here. I'll bring the distance out on the drop shadow. And you can see there, if I pull it out far enough, the drop shadow is in the shape of the letters, not in the shape of the outline, which is what I want. So the drop shadow doesn't really match the outline properly. So let's just undo that. Now to fix that, we need to flatten all this stuff and merge all this stuff together. And the easy way to do that is to use that Control Shift Alt plus E key trick. But to do that trick, you want to have everything hidden except what you want to have merged. So I'm just going to go down the lane here and just hide everything except for the two text layers. Now go to the top layer. Let's just unlock that. We don't need to lock at this point, so unlock that. On the top layer, keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, Alt, plus E. That copies both of these up onto this layer and merges the effects back into that one image. We can now hide those two layers. And now this is just one graphic piece. And because of that, we can put our drop shadow on that. So let's go ahead and bring our other images back in again. We want the flag image right there and the flag effects. We want our color fill. We want the capital building in there and our sky. And there's the text. So final step on the text. I'm just change the name here. That's our text layer right there. And let's do a drop shadow on the text layer now. Layer Layer Style, Style Settings. There it is. Drop Shadow. And you can see now if I pull this out, you can see now how the drop shadow matches the shape of the outline. And that's what I wanted to have happening in here. Okay, the lighting angle should be 135. It should match the last one that you used. So that should be fine. The size is 7. That's fine. The color is black. That's fine. Opacity, I'll set this at 50. Just a little bit darker. And on the distance, let's set this at 20. There we go, and choose OK. And there it is. Let's go down to the bottom layer so you don't have anything showing on this. And let's bring this up. I'll just float this window and stretch this out and zoom in just a little bit. And there we go. So there is our happy 4th of July little card or mini poster in here. Again, a lot of little tricks in this one. This is kind of a good one for practicing on a lot of these little techniques. But I think it comes out real nice. Nice little graphic look in here for Happy Fourth of July. Okay, there you go. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.